Hello everybody, welcome on the Esoteric Software Stream. My name is Erika and in today's stream we will be finishing the character helmet in the southeast direction to begin the side view, which should be a bit simpler. We will see how to readapt the various parts uh, from uh, this new view uh, to side view. And without further ado, let's have a look at what was done last time. So we have our character in the front view. Um, this is how the setup is always going to be, uh, despite the fact that we have multiple uh, directions in our file. In fact, we are storing these other directions inside a turnaround animation like this. On frame 5 is where I read the southeast direction, which is the first of the new directions that we added to this character. We also did last time this uh, control on his beautiful face so that he can move it. And we also have a separate setup here in the front view so we can get the same effect. What is missing is the fact that the rest of uh, his uh, parts should also follow. So we will be completing these. And uh, if we still have time, we will be beginning the side view. Uh, we already completed everything that concerns the face, which is great. So we basically only have left to do the, um, the body, the legs, the um, arms, and the sleeves. So this should be a hopefully easy part to do. We already bound this arm to the two bones that are relevant to it. So I'm gonna go into this testing animation that we had so that I can put my arm into a position to test it like this. And I'll change the weight. Now, the easiest way is to do this. Oh, and set it to 100%. And then I just select everything like this and smooth. Oh, I selected something I shouldn't have selected. Okay, because I don't want these two to move from where they are. Damn it! <laughs> Turns out I selected only those two. No, that's not what I meant. Okay. Now smoothing until it looks good. So I'm binding this uh, t-shirt to the bones. Okay, this should be in... Uh, maybe I need this one too. Wow, so many bones. I don't remember if I actually added all of these uh, also to the other sleeve. Oh, but I can check it very quickly. I just need to go here. Yeah, way less bones. But that's not a problem. I can always remove some later. Okay, so since, uh, as always, I did this operation on the correct frame of the animation, now I'm gonna pose this up and I'm gonna make the sleeve look good. Now I select arm here so it gets turned a little bit and then I make sure that the root has no influence whatsoever on my other vertices and I change the weights so our arm holder which is the replacement for our body is getting all this influence and I'm raising this up. I'm also thinking on speeding up these parts in the recording so that um, when I repeat something for the hundredth time, at least uh, people don't have to watch it that many times either. Oh, I like it this way. Okay, this was quick. So see, as I said, once you get the knack of how this should go, it's actually pretty easy to rig in a different direction. Also because we did all the setup in the previous streams. I'll test this bend, bend. This is good, so now I go to my turnaround on frame 5 because I moved some bones around. And I'm gonna select this sleeve and bind these bones here. I switch to the other animation. Uh, this, this little window here is very convenient. Um, if you perhaps are new to Spine, you may want to have a look at all the fantastic views that we have here because uh, each one has something useful that may make your workflow easier. 
You can organize things in tabs too. For example, if I open the playback view, I can place it in here and switch whenever I want. So I switch back to head test and I change all the influence to arm holder because I don't want to have the root. So in case I can remove the root whenever I want and I change the influence to this L arm. We still need to do the body and the tummy. Oh, that's great. Hips, tummy. I guess we already have everything we need. Okay, so now I'm editing the weights of the leg. And uh, it's not that anymore. Aha! Okay, so uh, the fact that it bends in the wrong direction is due to the fact that I didn't set it in here. Yeah, that's definitely bending in the wrong direction. So we can set it in the turnaround animation by going where the targets are. So we are going to change this to negative for one and negative, which is I'm checking positive for the other one too. So I go here, here I remove this. So I press spacebar to deselect. Then I select the first key. So all of the descendants are selected too. Then I go here, I paste and I pasted the pose so that now it bends in the correct direction. I'll also, <laughs> okay, this one needs weights yet. We finished this direction and we are ready to start with a new direction, the side view. I'm gonna repeat the process now because we're gonna add this new direction. So first we need to activate the new direction that we want to have here in the setup mode because we need to change all of these new images to um, meshes and bind them to the root. So that's gonna be a little boring but in that part we can speak about what you ate today at lunch for example. Uh, but let's begin. So we first want to make our job easier by filtering the tree on attachments and since um, I made you prepare the attachments by following a naming convention for the direction that all these parts are following. We should be able to find the ones under the E, which are the ones that correspond to the east direction. So we select them all. I selected them all by pressing the selecting the first and then selecting the last by while pressing my use shift shift um, so that I can select them all. I'm pressing H to make them visible. So we are not going to fix the draw order in this um, direction here, but I think that we can already activate this other south pose on frame 10. We do the same. So I go here, I go here, I select everything, I press H and I make that visible. Yeah. And we see that everything is in the wrong position and that's totally normal. Now you'll see that from this pose everything will slowly start to change and look more like in setup pose. The setup mode is the one place where everything looks correct. We want to be able to have everything looking correct in the animation and to achieve this we must make the, uh, all these uh, images independent from their bones temporarily. So that's why we are gonna select all of them and transform them into meshes. So this was already a mesh. If they are mixed, you are not gonna be able to check the mesh option. Um, you must have a single type selected to be able to see the additional parts here. And uh, I'm gonna check the mesh. Currently, we can't bind the, the, everything to a bone on the fly. So I have to do it by hand. Uh, so we finished uh, turning everything into a mesh and binding 
it to the root. So if we go back and check this uh, animation, in case something is not in the correct position, I'm gonna fix it. We can uh, start moving the bones to match the position of the new assets on frame 10 of this animation. So we're in frame 10 here of this turnaround animation. So let's begin to do that. Okay, I want to double check. Where did I place this here and here? So it's not quite here where I placed this. I need to place it more here. Okay, that looks good. Now I move this here and I also have to move here. All right, so first I will need to place this on the tip of the nose because we also use the tip of the nose as reference for the other directions too so here is the exact place i'm going back and forth to make sure that i'm placing the bones roughly in the similar pivots or pv how english say okay Perhaps in this direction in particular, we want need to have the um, shoulders moving that much. So I might not need to do all that complicated binding to these bones. So we can just pretend these bones don't exist. So I moved uh, these two and it looks really good. And uh, I'm also going to move uh, here. I'm trying to make it, it centered okay i'm gonna move this too aha i'm encountering that problem of not having things super straight so i'm first placing it where i want because i don't want these uh these legs to be bent in any way so i'm gonna use that trick on the legs again perhaps i'll do it now before i forget okay so the tummy here it's moved already i'm gonna do this just like last time i'm gonna select First, I'm gonna remove the filter here. I'm gonna go on the leg target and I'm gonna deactivate it temporarily. I'll do the same here so that now I can set it to the perfect rotation that I want. Well, not like that though. Just like we did last time, we are gonna select these two bones that are placed here and we copy their transforms by pressing Ctrl C. Then we select the two bones that are the targets that are not working right now, and we press Ctrl V to match their position. Next, uh, in word rotation, I reset their rotation to zero, and then we can remove the, well, we don't need to remove, but we can enable again the mixing. As you see, it's not moving anymore. It's perfect and it's straight. That's exactly matching the asset that I have here, which is a straight leg. Yeah, that's the features holder that I had here. So I'm gonna match it to this point here. And then this eye is not visible, so it's not really important. Perhaps I'll fix it later, but for now I'm not caring that much. And then I'm gonna match also here the pupil. And, uh, oh yeah, the cheek also needs to follow, and it's roughly here. Now I'm gonna prepare meshes. Like the previous heads were like this, and we are gonna repeat this. Now specifically for this head, I don't think we are gonna need to deform it. So I'm gonna ignore the head for now, in this case since there's no need for overcomplicating things. Yeah, let's move to the other parts. Or perhaps I'll start with the easy ones, so the feet. And I have to place the inner vertices too. 
So for the tummy to work, and that's interesting because yeah, we have a bone that it's gonna move the tummy, and we need to preserve the spine logo here. So I'm creating this sort of double border. And then I want, because this part here can just deform this way, so I'm gonna make another layer of vertices add more here and I'll add one two here so that I can soften the way it deforms. Also remember that the more um, how do you say it? The more they are, these vertices are placed in an harmonious way, the easier it will be to have them deform nicely. So I'm trying to spacing them out a bit better and so on. Okay, so this part should not deform particularly a lot. I guess I'll also remove this vertex here and instead force the geometry here. And I'm gonna close. Oh, we have the sleeves to prepare too. So, since it's so quick in this case, I'm gonna move here, save, and I maybe can start binding some of these parts to the respective bones. Okay, so since these uh, I mostly um, added weights for everything, that went so quick and I'm so happy about it. I'm gonna deselect everything. I click on the white keyframe here that it's comprehensive of everything under it. In fact, you see that it gets selected too. Then I copy by pressing Ctrl C. And then I go on Oh, that's so cute. Uh, on a new animation, which I'll call test E animation, because we're testing the E direction, east. And now that everything is in place, I'm gonna again make sure that these are bending in the correct position. Yes, they are. Okay, that's good. So I'll change the weights just like I did before. I'll be finishing this next time as our time for today is up. Uh, I'd say we got pretty far for this direction this time, so I'm very satisfied about it. Um, I hope to see you next time where we'll be uh, finishing this direction and at this point start already another direction, which will be the uh, northeast one. That's the end of today's stream. Thanks for staying with me until now. I hope to see you next time. And bye.